<laughs> sure is easier to play tracks backwards today with the digitalization of music. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. <laughs> Well, tonight we're talking about Techno Diablo. What's it mean, hmm? Precious, eh? <laughs> oh, chill the fuck out, Mr. Smeagol. And wipe your chin, you wretch. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm going to tell you all about Techno Diablo. So without further ado, let us go spelunking into the unfathomable darkness together tonight on Planet Verloc. Now before we begin, allow for me to fit this movie into your mind. The ancient djinn weighed in the infernal pools of lava moving like colossal towers of obsidian rock containing the eternal fire inside of these temporal bodies pushing onward through the magma and unformed earth, enclosed in a glove of gaseous heavens overhead. Mighty Balaam pauses thoughtfully, or entranced, Astaroth. What do you see, Lord? Balaam. Tiny beings with curves. Astaroth. Yes, I see it also. Knockers! And it is good. Come on! <laughs> you need psionics. Brillock.com slash shop. And keep the magic high. I uh, hell, pardon the commercial. So, it was written in the Old Hebrew Testament that, and I do quote, I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. End quote. Yes, he, the Lord, creates welts upon the flesh that which he deems is best, because he knows all, and leaves us in despairing and suffering. I mean, if I take that statement from the old Hebrew word for word, <laughs> right? Now that's one serious control freak if you ask me, but well, you're probably not asking me, which is all just as well, because I don't believe in the er, uh, good book. Instead, I'm talking about the power of imagination here and leaving behind the tales of woe and suffering to the biblical scholars and academics to present their dogma proper to their audience. Turning the page here, what I will tell you is that I have experienced a life of companionship with those ancient old ones since the earliest days of my youth. Long before I could walk, the shadows waited with me in the ebb and flow of mortal time, waiting for the exact moment of my puberty to interact with me on a more intimate level. Have I not seen my future? I've talked about this, having been shown the passages of time and where I did indeed go. And for these things, these gifts and assignments, I have the invisible technicians of the universe to thank. The supernatural, the satanic, the mystical, and the magical is rarely ever much like what other magicians um, romanticize. But in some cases, when approached in the dream world, it can be more emotional, fluid, personal, intimate, and even, at times, downright sexy. As for waking encounters with the residents of the invisible world, the meeting typically is all business, and we are made to listen, just as they would listen if we were to summon them by names of power. The door... That revolving door, yes, swings both ways, but few realize just how true this is. My astral travel to the Golden Wall of Sigils was an experience most exemplary of getting down to business. I began with a question, 
but I was made to listen. Instead of all of this supernatural stuff, and certainly our conversation will take us far outside the scope of religious views this evening, phew, and thank Balder, we don't have to get into theology tonight. But now we will talk about raising a new image of the devil and primeval in this wicked episode, you wascally rabbit. <laughs> All right, seriously now, lower the volume on your music player. And I do apologize if you're enjoying a classic Dio album or thoroughly immersed in the metallic discord of the sounds of Slayer, but we've got work to do, and it's high time we went about it. So here's my question for you, my friend. If you and I both evolve with our technology, then, well, don't you suppose our demons can do the same? Ancient and powerful, yes, but why not transform the image of classical animism and pagan icons into a more mm, approachable modern variant of the romanticized fawns like Pan. And so I have. So I have. But don't let my image spoil your own. Though I might ask you to lean closer to the speaker so I may saturate your sphere of sound with images of what I have in store for your prospective masterpiece in psionics. I envision Lucifer as something like the silhouette of a beautiful man standing before a spinning wheel. And indeed, I've had that experience. I am seeing his gray outline and behind him a shimmering disc rotating a series of ethereal inscription. They sense a portal beyond that point obscured by the symbols which bar the way. And at other times, I imagine a mighty quasar pulsating in a distant galaxy. A red eye to the left, a blue eye to the right, blinking in the cosmic vault. All indeed experiences I have had, which I am expressing to you now. Now, in contrast, the name Lucifer, or in contrast to that, when I hear the name Satan, this name brings to my mind quite a different image entirely. Would you like me to describe it to you? All right. So I shall. I envision him not as a theory anthrope with the head of a ram or goat, though I do like the Doom video game's image of merging the industrial genre with the old pan mythical concept, as entertaining as these might be. But rather, I more or less envision the Diablo in the embodiment of mighty Megatron. Yes, the same Megatron from the Transformers cartoon, or perhaps you've seen the films associated with that world of fiction. So Satan is Megatron for me, and why not? Most of the ancient entities are indeed amorphous gods anyway. That means they're shapeshifters. Your imagination changes them. Perhaps the countenance of Dracula works for some folks, and this is fine. But I think the more powerful primeval is something more than a mere vampire, right? Albeit, even a powerful vampire is still not quite the image for the Diablo. He should be one so mighty and badass that none can stand against him, before him, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think not. So, I like Megatron's image. Uh, some of you may prefer the image of Sauron. And that's fine as well. And the concept of Megatron really fits a glove in my workshop for, or it fits like a glove in my workshop for psionic robots and a variety of monster creatures I work with. I'm also very fond of the notion of a super being I personally refer to as Primordius, or simply the embodiment of primitive forces and something which has been present throughout all eternity and the eons of the distant past, and is the essence of all life forms to date. But if we're focusing on a warrior type of image, I might move away from the concept of Primordius and instead begin working with the heart of a black soul known as the Diablo, others refer to as Satan. And this is very well for the image of a dark, powerful knight, 
or a grim warrior image stamped into the omnipresent ether. And even a visage like Megatron in his almighty countenance will work for crafting Sanic robots to take on some of the ancient satanic or demon-like forces that you can imagine congealing with our own minds into whatever operation of darkness that the Sanicus is intent on. Is there a little bit of that in you? Don't you ever feel the rebellion burning in your heart? And you should. A desire to cast aside the old garments weaved in a world so enameled in deceptive, disempowering lies about where we come from and who we truly are? Never. Now, be honest. You know there's that old argument that God wears different hats and works in mysterious ways. And Christianity is not unique in this regard. We can, for instance, take into account the duality expressed of the god Odin in the Norse lore and northern magic. It is arguable that the god Loki may have been nothing more than the expression of duality in Odin's nature. That is, Odin being one who tests, may also be one who tricks others into performing certain tasks to complete a cycle or what have you. And there you have it, a trickster. We can also take into account Buddhism. There's the concept of Maya, the deceiver, whom ever seeks to keep possession of all souls on the earth. And either way, we look at the gods, the religions, the lore, the mythology, our predicament here as humans seems rather dismal and alighted from the true path of self-empowerment and freedom. The psionics and its philosophy lends a certain air of refreshment to metaphysics as in, and is, in contrast, a true blessing of technology and magic when compared with the imaginings of an elderly bearded tyrant in the sky or a horned demon down in Hades. I would argue that those of us with a rebellious nature are simply embracing one side of a duality we attribute to the many faces of the Demiurge. And, of course, the concept of taking uh, the great Dark Lord and making him a simple prankster is entirely ridiculous, as are the cartoons resembling and depicting such a simple type of villain. I mean, that would be as far from the tree as the apple could fall. Sort of like taking the character from the Lord of the Rings, the Dark Lord Sauron, and then transforming him into a lowly creature like Mr. Smeagol or a burglar like the tiny Bilbo Baggins. You ever get the feeling that these monotheists ruling the world today were just rubbing it in and making play and fun of a great being that should be more highly regarded? That may actually be true. I don't know. What do you think? The real fun is in discovering how these images and magical formula will shape our life for the better. Or bring about diabolical vengeance upon those whom have caused you great harm. Remember that dentist who drilled into your teeth with, without bothering to give you a shot of Novocaine, thought he was being clever, taking advantage of you? Well, show him who's boss. Send the mighty Megatron after him and his staff of crooks. Get back at that landlord who never fixed your window and sucked up all your money harassed your girlfriend, trying to pick up on your sister, smash him with Megatron. And how does one go about achieving such a feat? Why, just merge the ancient concepts of the Diablo with our modern colossal and sentient robot, Mighty Megatron, or even a cyber demon overlord as might be conceived of in a game like Doom. And then, of course, read through my marvelous volume, Psionic Robot, An Artificer's Guide to Anthropomorphic Constructs. This book will see the dirty work done. Never be taken advantage of again. 
never be lied to. Remember, whatever you can conceive of, the universe will provide it for you. All the angels in heaven and the devils in the underworld belong to your faculties. Don't listen to the rhetoric of preachers and missionaries. And by the same token, do not take counsel of your fearful cults, their cult leaders and occultists. The dogmatic. As Conan the Sumerian would have said, Men are fools. Or, Crom's devils let men worship what gods they will. Of course, you know... There's only one true God, and that's Air Doctor von Rillock. <laughs> yes, I couldn't resist that. All right. You know, my first taste of the Pantheon began with a flight to Greece in the early 1980s, and I remember climbing the hill to Athena and the Minotaur in the museum in Athens. And around the same year, we flew out to London, where I recall most vividly the section of this one wax museum we went to, a Doctor Who theme. And there was this minotaur creature immortalized in a giant figure statue, awaiting, brooding in the dark quietly. And I stepped on a floor panel before the creature. And by way of some electronic mechanism under the floor panel, the eyes of that minotaur lit up infernal red with it and releasing a terrible and awful roar, which terrified my little brother. <laughs> and yet I was fascinated by this creature so much that when we returned home, I asked my parents to help me learn how to do paper crochet to make this minotaur mask, and we did that, and I just loved it. Anyway, what I have found in life is simply this. Your devils work against you when you fear them, period. But in fact, they're never really truly ever working against you. Resistance that they provide, diversion that they place before you is a common grounds for training your mind up and making you more solid. Thus you are ever on the path to improvement. Put aside the thoughts and assumptions that you have been taught and forget what you think you know. If we focus on enameling the old world in technology, here's the fun part, we can at length arrive at a complete supertronic pantheon of the various gods. Those God forms which we deem most fitting to serve our purposes. Yes, the rule of the psionic pragmatist is to work with what serves you. Not the other way around. Why bend on any you, when you can sit in an armchair? So, merry crafting on your next monster piece. Oh yes, and before we adjourn this evening, I remind you to submit a sketch for the Daughters of Venom collaborative pathworking project, which is poised to disrupt the use of the globalist fetish word Anthropocene. Mmm, we're going to have so much fun with this. Simply send your envision likeness of the evil creature to verlock at gmail.com v-r-i-l-o-c-k at gmail.com this is a creature spawned by the seven sisters of the goddess venom and crafted in the frigid hell plateau of antarctica send me your drawing and i'll add your monster piece to the pool to create this wondrous disruptive aggregor so well this concludes our merry little gathering in the hallowed hours of the night and thank you for joining me and until next time we do have this meetup, remember, keep the magic high. This is your friend, Air Doctor Von Brillock, signing out. Thank you.